<laughs> Me and Sasha like to do this new thing where we walk into the YouTube video and act very candid. But anyways, hey everyone, it's your girl Chrissy here and I'm back with another YouTube video. Today's YouTube video is gonna discuss five must-do back exercises. So if you find this video useful, please do leave a thumbs up as it goes a long way and it supports this channel and it inspires me to continue to produce even more incredible content for you to help you along your fitness journey. But if you love this YouTube video, you're also gonna love this video right here. My five must do lower body exercises to build those glutes and hamstrings. So without further ado, let's get into exercise number one. Now there's a few different ways that you can train your back. So we're gonna go through everything together and I'm gonna make it so simple like I always do. And by the end of this video, you're gonna walk into a gym and you're gonna know exactly why you're training that way and exactly what you're training. So you can train your back horizontally and also vertically. There's completely different ways to train it. And that's why with my strong program on the Tonoscope app, you have the different variations. So you hit different areas of your back. So the whole bodybuilder concept in the body real world is everyone's always striving for that X frame. The X frame is where you have that nice big wide back, which gives you the illusion of a tiny little waist and then those big juicy thighs. Now the reason I actually really love the promotion of an X frame is because it encourages people to lift weight and encourages women to eat more. And that's exactly what we're here to do. So the first exercise is a lat pull down. So the first thing you're gonna do with a lat pull down, positioning is absolutely key. So I'm lucky enough, my gym has this adjustability right here so I can bring it up and bring it back down. The aim when you're setting up a lat pull down is you wanna sit really nice and snug into your lat pull down machine. The whole point is when you're pulling down, your body is naturally wanna, is gonna wanna come up with it. So this is gonna help you secure yourself. However, tip of the day, if you cannot adjust your lap pull down, please don't worry. All you need to do is grab yourself some five kg plates, position them on the floor just like so, and it's gonna give you that much needed elevation. Now, when performing a lap pull down, there's a few things I want you to know. Grip is everything. So what you're gonna do is never grip with your thumb. You're gonna leave your thumb out. Positioning of your hand means everything as well. The wider your grip is, the more out your lats are gonna be hit. The more narrow, the more inwards you're gonna target your back. So, as you can see here, my grip is nice and wide. I'm leaving my thumbs out because we don't wanna contract our forearm here, which is gonna be like our secondary and third muscle component. So you just wanna hit your back. Keeping our thumbs out, gripping it with my four fingers, bringing myself down, snug into the chair. However, you're not going to be completely pulled in. You're gonna start upright just like so. Keeping that core tight, retracting your scapula back. Did you see that? I didn't start like this. I retracted back. Naturally, that's gonna raise my chest up. I'm pulling the weight down and I'm also pulling with my elbows. Now, let me explain that really simply for you. If you're just gripping the weight, sitting down, not retracting and then doing this, your biceps are gonna take over. Your biceps, when you're training back, should be your secondary muscle, not your primary. So if you're not retracting back, you're not engaging your back enough. So your back doesn't really know what it's doing at this point. So you're gonna do all the pulling with your biceps and not your back. So let me show you the difference. This is me pulling with my lats. I'm retracting back and I'm pulling the weight with my lats. Now this is me pulling with my biceps. And what you're gonna find is this little annoying yanking motion. Every single rep, you should reset. Every single rep should have an intention. If you're not following the protocol, that is sit in, arms up, positioned correctly, Retract back, chest up, chin nice and tucked in, core nice and tight, pull with my elbows and release gently. Pull with my elbows, creating a nice big 
semicircle and release gently. I can't stress enough how important it is to really take your time with each and every single rep. Stop trying to rush your workouts. Stop trying to rush that movement. You're in the gym for actually a very short period of time. Let's say you're in the gym for one hour. That's one hour of your day. So I would rather you take your time to do the reps properly and really feel it where you're supposed to rather than just rushing it and getting as many exercises done as possible. Four great movements done perfectly is so much better than eight ones that are rushed completely. The next exercise is going to be a single arm row. Now this exercise, I know for a fact, there are so many community members that really struggle with this exercise and actually they skip it, which is totally fine. Whenever you come across an exercise you're unsure of, you just feel so overwhelmed and then you can't help but just feel stupid. And I've had so many moments, even now when I walk into a new gym, I look at the machines and I'm like, what, what is this? I don't know what I'm doing. And then I just stick to the exercises that I'm comfortable with. However, it's good to experiment and it's good to understand the movements you are doing it's so important so please if you are finding this helpful let me know in the comments below or send this video to someone who you know is really struggling with intimidation in the gym and you know this is going to go a long way now when it comes to rows the best tip i'm going to give you and this genuinely changed my life you need to imagine creating a semicircle so what i find a lot is people overarch their shoulders, they round them forward, and then they yank in. They yank in, just like so. Remember, you're training this part of your back, right here. So you should be stretching it out in front of you, creating a semicircle, and naturally raising your chest upright. Your shoulders shouldn't be rounded, because that means your core is not engaged like it should be and you shouldn't just be yanking because the moment you yank too hard, you're gonna strain and you're gonna injure yourself. So what I want you to do is first grab a lighter weight and just focus on the motion. You should be creating a semicircle when you're doing this movement. So what do I mean by a semicircle? Let me show you. First position in is one of your feet positioned firmly onto the bench, grabbing your hand on the edge. This is gonna give you your security. This is your setup. Bending that knee, whenever you pick up a weight, always bend your knee because it's gonna help offload from your back. This is your starting position. Now the next thing I'm gonna tell you is so important. Roll that shoulder back. You're gonna bring it slightly forward, roll your shoulder back, and then create that semicircle. Just like so. So you wanna imagine almost going start, finish, start, finish. You're gonna feel it all here. Contract, release. The weight should never slam the floor and you should always control your positives holding with your negatives. Control your positives with your negatives. Naturally, your chest is gonna to wanna to come a little bit upright, that's completely fine, but please take your time. You're not swinging. There's a difference between doing this and really controlling, contracting, releasing. Controlling, contracting, releasing. You're also pulling with your elbow. Your elbow is pulling you in the correct motion. You're contracting before releasing back down. to the third exercise one of my absolute all-time favorite exercises but I see so many different variations so we're going to talk about all of them a lot of people have a lot to say about this exercise so I'm going to break it down this exercise so long as your ass is on the bench so long as you are retracting your shoulders back do it the way that feels great for you I can't stress that enough social media and YouTube is such a crazy world and sometimes you get so sucked into other people's opinions and other people just making random ass YouTube videos about the way you're living your life. And the way I see it is, I'm moving my body, I feel good, 
I feel the best I ever have done, leave me the hell alone. And that's what I want you to remember when you're training. Focus on your form, but form is different also for everybody. There's a complete difference to how someone has, who's been training in the gym for one year is training to someone who's been training there for 10 years. There's a complete difference. You get more confident, you understand the movement more and you experiment more. So with this movement, there's two different variations. Number one, you have your textbook safety variation. So your textbook safety variation is you're gonna bend your knees slightly. They're not gonna be completely locked out. You should never lock your knees out with any movement. Always keep a soft touch to them. Your core is gonna be nice and contracted my shoulders are gonna roll back that means my chest is upright I'm gonna lean only slightly forward and then I'm gonna pull just like so bring out slightly forward and then roll my shoulders back and pull yet again lean out slightly forward when I'm pulling ready roll those shoulders back hold and pull now that's one variation the way I personally like to do it, and you know, I, I found that this works just better for me because I like that deeper stretch. This is old school. You know, people like Arnold used to do this back in the day, so I don't think there's a problem with it. I like to come a little bit slightly forward, just like so. So I'm getting that really nice contraction right there, and then I'm pulling, just like so. I like to come slightly more forward, and then pull. I'm getting a nice deep stretch as I'm pulling forward, controlling the weight and then bringing back in. Fourth movement, this is a horizontal movement. This movement is also a movement that confuses a lot of people. It confused me for such a long time. I never really kind of knew how I was supposed to perfect this movement because I was like, oh my God, am I swinging too much? Am I using too much core? Am I using too much leg? Am I pulling wrong? Where are you supposed to have the bar? By your ribs, by your belly button, by your hips. Oh my God, overwhelming. Fitness shouldn't be that stressful. Like leave it out. My life is already so madness. I don't want to, be worrying about how to do a row for God's sake. So you have different variations. You have overhand and you have underhand. Now, if you want a video on different grips and what those different grips are targeting, let me know in the comments below because I think that video will be very interesting. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna do under grip, just like so. Barbells tend to have these grips right here, right? It enables you to get a better grip so you're not slipping. So this bit slippery, this has a better grip. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna position your hands. I always position my thumb here, so it's nice and secure. And then I'm holding it right there. My thumb is still out and then I am gripping it again, just like so. I don't wanna go too wide. That doesn't really feel nice for me. I'm gonna go positioned here positioned here. I'm gonna pull up, bend in my knees, pull up. Now here is where the magic happens. Remember what I said about your core in my previous video? Breathe out, <sighs> contracting that core. Bending those legs, bringing the weight down. Now this is vital. Bring the weight slightly forward, push back, pull, pull, pull. Pull. There's different variations. You can lean completely over and you can have an overhand grip and you can pull the weight just like so. Another way to do it, slight bend forward, core tight, breathe out, pull by your hips. And as you're pulling, you're pulling with your elbows, you're keeping your core nice and contracted and you're not moving your torso. There's a complete difference between you pulling and moving with the weight, just like so. That in a way becomes a very small version of a deadlift. Your core needs to stay completely stabilized, completely tight and engaged. So that's why by bending, your knees, pushing your hips back, keeping that core nice and tight. When you're pulling with your elbows, lean slightly upright with your chest, bring the barbell to your hips, 
pull it back down. Controlling your negative, bringing that weight back up. Let's go through it one more time together. Gripping the barbell, having my thumb outwards, just like so. Remember, we don't want to engage that forearm. Bending my knees, bringing the weight up, retracting my shoulders back, never roll forwards, always roll back. Engaging that core, bending those knees, bringing the weight forward, pulling, coming back down, pulling, chin nice and tucked in, coming back down, pulling, chin nice and tucked in, coming back down. Good job. All right, seeing as I have your attention with this YouTube video because you think you're gonna snatch your waist, <laughs> um, which you are, but you thought this was gonna be an abs video, but it's not, it's a back video. Um, I can't stress enough the importance of training your rear delts. Your rear delts are those small little muscles in your back that you can train on pull or push days. That means shoulders or back day. But I just think they're so neglected and I just think they're so important and it just makes your back look so beautiful. So please don't neglect them. So one of the exercises that I've been trying out, I've been trying this out, it's not yet on the Tony Sculpt app because I want to give it a bit more of a go. And you haven't seen this one on my YouTube video just yet. This is a cable rear delt movement. So essentially, you want to position, I'll show you, your cables, just like so, should be on the same level. In fact, I can maybe even pull it a bit more down. Then you're gonna grip one of the cables with the opposite hand and the other with the opposite hand, and you're gonna bring them out in front of you. You're actually going to overreach your shoulders. You're not gonna do this upright. You're gonna overreach because when you pull, you're gonna pull with your rear delts. The difference if you are upright, you're gonna pull with your triceps. Now, that's the problem with rear delts sometimes. Sometimes you feel your triceps overtake. So I'm just gonna go the other way around so you can see me. This is the difference if I'm just pulling with my triceps. You can see my tricep, if I have a tricep, is trying to engage. But then when I'm leaning forward and completely isolating my rear delt, that's contracting so much more. So the aim of the game is for you to lean forward, hinge your hips slightly backwards, bringing the cables up about eye level, contract, hold for a second, and then releasing the weight back away. But as the weight comes back to the front of you, you wanna push out. That's what you wanna do, you wanna push out. You don't wanna bend on your elbows. You wanna push out, keep them as straight as possible and pull, just like so. Bring it out, reset, pull. Bring it out, reset, core tight and pull. Okay, so there you have it. My five must do exercises to snatch that waist. Now I, I wanna ask you, because I'm actually not sure and I don't know how you feel about it. Look, like we grew this channel together. We always have done, we always will do. So I'm gonna be honest with you. I've always refrained myself from trying to do overly clickbait titles and overly clickbait thumbnails. The reason being is I don't want it to trigger people. I never have wanted to trigger people, regardless of how many views I might accumulate or subscribers I might grow. I'm a little bit hesitant to do that sort of stuff. However, on the flip side, when you do do a clickbait video and then I am providing the information I am, maybe it's encouraging more people to click on it and then I keep them staying when I provide them the information. So I just wanna ask you, do you find clickbait titles or clickbait videos triggering? And if you do, I promise I will never ever do them. And I promise I will always, always provide as much helpful information as possible. But I'm always in two minds of it. I'm, I'm not sure if it's 
a good thing to do it and then you provide people with useful information or you just stay true to your roots and you don't really follow trends. But I never wanna do anything that triggers absolutely anyone. So just let me know, it's an open conversation that I'm so honestly genuinely wanna know what you have to say um, because like I said, this channel is yours too. This should be your fitness hub, this should be your safety and this should be a place where you come and get really simple fitness education that can help you along your fitness journey. So I hope this video helped you in every single type of way. I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, like I said, leave a thumbs up and ensure that you're subscribed to this channel. I love you always and forever. And I'm so thankful for you. I'll see you next time.